First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with white, official weight, 146, one half pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 21 victories, including 12 knockouts, only three defeats from the windy city of Chicago, Illinois, David Estrada. And his opponent, across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue with white, official weight, 146 pounds. A perfect professional record, consisting of 19 bouts, 19 victories, including 16 knockouts, fighting out of Winter Haven, Florida, the undefeated welterweight, Andre Beto. Okay, Berto, David, we scheduled to box 12 rounds for the NABF Welterweight Championship. I've gone over the rules in the dress room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Estrada's trainer says his problem is he has too much of a fighter's instinct. He, he can't control himself at times. While Berto's trainer says his worst problem is his power because he tries to use it too much. Sounds like a collision to me. Well, at least one of the two fighters, Estrada was saying that he wants it to be a collision. He's been bothered in the past by slicker boxers, Ishe Smith, in a 10-round decision. Shane Mosley, who he said bothered him with his footwork, simply moved too well. Berto's starting out real good with his jab. He wants to make that notice straight away. Berto in his last fight was knocked down by Cosme Rivera in the eighth round, tasting a perfect uppercut flush on the chin. It's a rite of passage for young Sars on the way up to go to the canvas for the first time. Oscar De La Hoya can tell you about it. Two or three times early in his career. Felix Trinidad was knocked down six times in early rounds by guys whom he eventually would get up to knock out. And it's uh, a, a piece of experience about which Berto smiled and said, OK, now I know what that's like. We'll see what happens next. Good little left hook inside by Estrada. He tries to follow it up. Berto well, that's has to shake him, uh, shake Berto, Jim. Berto has good hand speed and, and patience, I think, Lennox. In, in the fights I've seen, he doesn't rush himself. Seems to be pretty good at waiting for his moment. And that's important. Uh, to show good poise and patience is important. Figuring your guy out, starting off with the jab like he's doing, you know, that's only good for him. Recognizing that Estrada is solid and strong, Berto sparred with some middleweights. And there's another good left hook inside by David Estrada. Berto sparred with middleweights and said, I think they were harder punchers than Estrada. So far, he's handled both of Estrada's two pretty good flush left hooks. Berto landed an uppercut in that last exchange. And if you look at Estrada, he's, def he's trying to put Berto back on the ropes, trying to force him back and, and impose his will on him. But Berto's not standing for that. He's answering with his punches. at least as much a fight as a boxing match so far. Now Berto begins to work behind the jab, which is what he said he would want to do. But he wanted to use his jab more, show more poise, try to make it easier for himself in there, and has been the case sometimes. And you know, this is an improvement on his jab that I've seen in this fight than in past fights. Estrada's made his point to a certain degree as Berto backs up into the ropes. Now Berto motions him in as if to say, come on, give me a chance to counter you. Good uppercut. Momentarily centers the action back in Berto's favor, and he grins as he goes to his corner. Hello. 
Yeah, we're good. Let's zoom in. All that I need. All that I need for you. You have to make sure that when you're in the clinch, your hands are tight, all right? Because he's trying to punch inside the mix, okay? Your keep feet. your fucking hands up after you punch, baby. Okay, okay, Come on. Feet. Okay. Make sure you keep your position, too. Okay. Touch this guy and move him a little bit. Touch him and move him a little bit more. Let's, uh, let's get a little more work in there, all right? Okay. Touch him and move. The beautiful day. That was a good run, baby, all right? As soon as he touches you, I answer him back, all right? Fast speed. Don't have to put that much pressure on that jab. Everybody, let's just work the speed. Here you go. Good job, man. Let's go. Yeah. Compu box numbers in round one. Berto, 14 out of 46. Estrada, 17 out of 59. Harold Letterman gave the first round to Estrada rather than to Berto. Andre threw 35 jabs, at least making good on his promise. He tried to work more behind the jab. He only landed seven of them. Alberto comes out with a flurry to begin the second round. I heard the man in his corner saying, keep your hands together when he's inside. Berto working with serious purpose to try to shift the momentum a little bit here in the first minute of round two. Estrada backed up there for the first time in the fight. Now comes forward again and lashes Berto with a body shot. And surely it's clear to Berto now, if not before coming into the ring, and he's working against a higher level of professionalism than he's seen in his previous fights. And that he's been inspired by that to use his jab more. He knows he can't just win by winging punches and balling. Good left hook off the jab there by Andre Berto. And as you can see, Berto is very effective with the jab right now. And Estrada doesn't know what to do. What Estrada's trying to do, he's trying to get him in trying to put Berto against the ropes, but Berto's got some good foot movement right now. And he's staying away from him. So this is this is a position where he doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be against the ropes because that's where Estrada wants him. He wants this he wants him against the ropes so he can throw his combinations where he feels comfortable. Berto more effective momentarily here in the center of the ring. Estrada bodies him off and manages to push him into the ropes one more time. Berto with a little smile on his face as if to say, hey, this is good work. This is pushing me to the limit a little bit. Hard right hand upstairs by David Estrada. Tries to follow it up. Berto ducks the second right hand. Just missed with an uppercut that was designed to throw Estrada into the lights. Good left hook to the body by David Estrada who's giving as good as he gets again, midway through round two. Yeah. Good left hook to the body there by Berto, but Andre's a little flat-footed and has dropped his hands now, giving Estrada some chances upstairs. In the fights that Berto has been given to develop him, he's never been confronted with someone who appears to be as strong as he is. November 18 kicks off the four-week series Mayweather Hatton 24-7. It's our Total Access Reality Series following both fighters closely as they prepare for their December showdown. And Saturday, December 8th, HBO pay-per-view. The live fight, Floyd Mayweather, unbeaten, against Ricky Hatton, unbeaten, for Floyd's welterweight title. You should be able to move this guy all night long, okay? This guy's touching you when you're standing still, okay? Don't stand still. All right? Touch him in a little movement. Circle this guy, little angles. This guy, is, you're way too fast, this guy. Only time he gets you... Him. You understand me? All right. That was his round, baby. Can't let this happen too often. All right, baby, let's go. Let's go. Set this out. Get the towel. Get the towel. Compu box numbers for the first two rounds are extremely close. Berto has landed 39 punches. Estrada has landed 38 punches. 
That round was 25 of 68 for Berto and 21 of 65 for Estrada. Larry mentioned the determination of Berto to try to keep working more behind his jab. 18 of 45 jabs in the second round. Berto trying to show that he can think his way out of problems rather than just fight his way. Fighter has to be able to do both. Berto's doing a good job by keeping that right hand up because Estrada's throwing that left hook like he means business. Oh, Estrada's determination is fierce and visible. He's here to pressure Berto all the way. They've fought at a blistering pace so far. It'll be interesting to see if we get to round six or seven, which, if either, can keep this up. Berto's elected to stand in and fight with a Estrada. Estrada. I don't know if that's the right move, but he's doing a good job. At the moment, he's not getting hit. They're both making contact, and a lot of it is solid contact flush on the jaw. And Estrada seems to make his point there as Berto again backs up into the ropes. But you heard Andre's trainer, Tony Morgan, telling him, you've got much better foot movement, you've got much more skill, use it. But sometimes a pressure fighter like Estrada makes you fight him. Good left hook upstairs by Berto. Momentarily stuns Estrada and backs him up. I don't like the fact that Berto's throwing a combination and then laying in there. He needs to put his hands up or even get out. Doesn't need to get in there and, and, and wait for the answer from Estrada. Because the answer is coming. Estrada is attempting to answer every hard blow with a shot of his own. When you've been stronger than every opponent you face, you're trying to prove once again that you're the stronger, tougher guy. For the welterweight division, this is man-sized stuff. This is the kind of a fight Miguel Cotto could appreciate. Brutal, hard punishment to both the head and body inside. See, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to Berto. He's throwing the combination, he's laying in there. It doesn't need to be. He's got enough skill to throw the combination and move. Big right hand and a straight left by Berto. Estrada trying to show that he can come back one more time. Four-punch combination. One around. And the crowd rises to its feet. <laughs> 